Hey guys, so today I am going to start some peach wine. I had these frozen and I took them out of the freezer this morning. And I am just going to dump the whole thing in here. I have found that Since the pits are not going to be chopped up or nicked or anything like that, that they will be fine because they're only going to be in here for two to three days while it gets started, well about three or four days, while the whole thing gets started and then the pits and the remaining fruit and everything will be taken out. So I'm just going to pour the whole thing in there. I'm going to go by my little recipe book here and see, see what it says. Seven pints of water. Alright, we're going to pour in our seven pints of water. Alright, this calls for two pounds of sugar and I know from doing this that two pounds is three and a half cups so And remember, it does not have to be perfect. Alright, one and a half teaspoons of acid blend. So there's one. And there's the half. teaspoon of peptic enzyme one quarter of a teaspoon of tannin half teaspoon of energizer which is the yeast nutrient and one Camden tablet which I'm going to crush between two spoons and then the yeast will wait until tomorrow all right, I'm going to stir this up. I'm going to bring this in and show you guys. Right now, it's pretty ugly. It's pretty ugly right now, but it will be very tasty. So I'm going to put this lid on here. I'm actually just going to kind of drape it over. And this will go in the house because for this first part of the ferment, so I'm just going to get it to walk in once, maybe two spots. All right, just enough to keep it on there. Um, but this first part of the ferment gets pretty vigorous. So go ahead and put this on there so I can keep an eye on it. All 
All right, I'm going to set this in my kitchen just like this, and then tomorrow we'll come back and add the yeast. guys so it's the next day I'm gonna open this up pretty sure I will be getting some more glass containers to use for this I do not like messing with this lid Just looks like a bunch of slushy, mushy peaches. Alright, and now we're going to add our yeast. I think this is, yeah, about a half a teaspoon to the rest of this package. I'm going to put it in there. I'm going to stir it up a little. Put the lid back on. in. And that will go in my kitchen just like that. And we'll check on it each day. You should see some vigorous bubbling going on in here within the next couple of days. So that's it for today. All right, guys, this is two days after adding the yeast. And you will see the peaches have started to float up to the top and create a cap. But you can see that the yeast is doing what it's supposed to do, and I don't know if you can hear that. Stir it up good. And trust me, at this point, the smell is awful. <laughs> but it's just the fermenting smell. I'm going to stir that up. I'm going to put this lid back on. And then we will check it again tomorrow to see if we're getting some good bubbles here. Okay, so this peach wine has been going for about four days now. We're going to transfer it into our glass carboy. So this is an auto siphon hose. So the idea is to try and siphon out all the liquid and leave all of the, the mushy peach scraps behind.
right, so now we're going to put our stopper thing in there. Transfer this over here, our airlock. This will allow the oxygen to escape without letting stuff in that we don't want in. And then now this will sit for anywhere from a week to three months, just depending on how long it takes for all of the carbon or all of the fermentation to take place. So after about four or five days, I will check the barometer reading, the uh, specific gravity, which I forgot to show you guys when I first started this. I did an initial gra gravity reading, and the peach was at 1.09. So we will see what it ends up and be able to calculate our alcohol by volume. So I'm going to set this on my counter and let it do its thing. Okay guys, so our peach wine has been sitting for about six weeks now and it has fermented completely dry. There was no more bubbling, hasn't been any bubbling for a few days now. Actually for probably close to a week, I just haven't been able to get to this. Uh, but it is fermented completely dry, so if you like a dry wine, it's perfect just like it is. But I like mine uh, semi-sweet or so. So I'm going to siphon all of this without getting the sediment off the bottom um, into the bucket and then go from there. You have to get used to, if you're going to make wine, wasting a little bit on the bottom because you want to do everything you can to not get any of the sediment that might be on the bottom of the carboy. Um, now, I did rack this one time in between, which basically means I just siphoned into another another glass carboy um, and left the sediment at the bottom. So I did do that once in between. Uh, and then I'll just make sure this time that I don't get any more sediment. So. Alright, so the next thing I'm going to do is, uh, you need one Camden tablet per gallon. This is about a gallon and a half. Um, I had another glass jar besides this that I put in there first um, because it didn't all fit in there the first time. So, it's a little more than a gallon. So just to be safe, I'm going to use two Camden tablets and I'm just going to smash them between two spoons. And then I'm just going to put that down in my bucket. And then a quarter teaspoon per gallon of potassium sorbate or stabilizer. So I'm going to put, that's a quarter teaspoon and then a little bit more. Mix that into the bucket. Okay, I also took a little bit out of the uh, the first other uh, jar that I had and poured it into this into my little beaker so that I could get a hydrometer reading, which we are at. Point nine nine ish. I 
and this was when I did the hydrometer reading before the fermenting. We were at um, 0.08, I mean 1.08. So I'm pulling up a ABV calculator on my phone and you put in 1.08 starting and we're ending at 0.99 which comes out to 11.81% alcohol by volume. So, a little high for a wine, but it's very good. I'll have to rinse that out and put it back in my... To be careful with these things, all of them break fairly easy. You don't want to drop them. That's why I don't set the hydrometer just on the table so it can roll off or anything like that to put straight back in here. Um, keep these things protected. They're not that expensive. I think I paid about 15 bucks for this kit that has the beaker and the hydrometer and a little brush for cleaning and then it has some some calculations for you for uh, like uh, this will tell you that if you're starting at say 1.06 your possible alcohol by volume is 7.8 um, stuff like that anyway okay now like I said this has been fermented completely dry so I have dissolved some sugar uh, this is about two two and a half cups of sugar in two quarts of water and I'm just going to add a little bit remember you can always add but you can't take away once you put it in there and a little bit goes a long way uh, I figured that out when I made the plum wine I got it too sweet so I'm going to try not to do that this time See if I can get a little bit of this. Into this measuring cup just so I can take a sip. Mm. No, that needs a little bit more. And you have to remember too at this point. It still has that alcohol burn, so you have to be careful. Sometimes it's, it masks the sweetness. I'm just going to go a hair more. I'm leery now after getting that last one too sweet, so. <laughs> Whew, yeah, that alcohol burn is still there. Alright, so this is all mixed in. Now I am going to put it in the bottles. All right, let's fill the bottles. don't think this is going to be enough bottles, but I have several of these smaller ones, which I would prefer not to use, but since that's what I have. Now I 
Oh, look, I filled that one a little bit. Oops. Alright, so now I'm going to close all these up. And put them in the pantry. Now, it'll probably be four months or more before I even try this because the long, right, like I said, right now it still has that alcohol burn, but the longer it sits, the smoother it gets. So I want to put that in the cabinet and I'm going to wait probably four to six months before I even try it. I mean, you, you saw that I tasted it as I was bottling it, but it's not a true taste because it's not smooth yet. So I will label these and I'll put the date on them so that I know when they went in the pantry and then uh, maybe in about four to six months we'll come back and we'll do a taste test. But it's that simple. It's, it's very easy to do, it's just time consuming. Uh, there's a lot of time with it just sitting on the counter. So if you got the time and you're willing to have a little bit of patience, it's a pretty good product. So, And it's very, very cheap, especially for me since I get all my fruit from my own trees. Um, I don't have to buy my fruit, so very, very economical. I, I estimate it cost me about 40 cents a bottle, uh, and that's for the regular wine size bottles. Now some people um, like to use the regular wine bottles uh, with the cork and all that stuff, which might be kind of nice, but I don't want to have to buy a corker and all that stuff right now. Um, and these bottles can get kind of expensive. Uh, these flip top ones, uh, to order them online, they are about five or six dollars each. And I found these at my grocery outlet with juice in them. Like this one was pink lemonade. So was this one. Some of them had like a um, regular lemonade. Some of them had a fruit punch in them. Um, but anyway, they were $3.49. So I bought them and then we drank the juice. And then I reused the bottles. So I need to get some more. But anyway, you can, you can find the bottles fairly economically if you know what you're looking for. So anyway, that's what I do.